Hey, on why my Corvette's still not running. Um, we got the bass tune from CSB and uh, loaded it up. And the car still didn't idle. What the fuck? <laughs> I figured, oh, maybe I'm a little low on gas. I'll put some new gas in there, some fresh gas. It's been sitting for like a month. The tank was probably six weeks old or so. So I figured, you know, I'll go get gas. I put eight gallons in and uh, yeah, it's came back, <laughs> loaded the base tune up. It still just stalled right away. First thing, just <clears throat> dead. Um, so then we start wondering what the hell. So I keep it running. Um, eventually it did kind of learn an idle, which I'll put in here. So then once it started idling, um, eventually it held the idle on its own. I could get out of the car, checking all the fluids, everything's cool. But this whole bank was like ice cold again. So if you remember from the previous video, we had an issue where this bank, I had the coil wires hooked up backwards and it wouldn't fire at all. Um, you know, we had four dead cylinders on that side. We thought the O2 sensor went bad. We changed the O2 sensor out, it didn't do anything. Uh, and then we realized the coils are on backwards. So that side was like 500 degrees. This side was like 150. Clearly was something was wrong, but it sounded pretty sweet. Um, so then we kind of start wondering, is it not getting fuel, is it not getting spark? It had compression, it had great compression. So then I'm looking at the spark plug that I took out of there, and unfortunately I don't have a video of it, but it was a brand new spark plug, just like what I put in there. Like it had never seen fuel before. So even before, when I got it started for the first time and running, it was only running on, at a most, seven cylinders, but probably more like six. These two were still dead. Um, so then, we do a little more investigating and the injectors are firing, they sound fine. Um, the clip on this one broke, or the this ground wire broke, we're gonna replace it, but I plugged it in for now. Um, basically it was running on seven cylinders, or running on five cylinders after that. <laughs> so at that point it definitely didn't hold any idle. Um, but while we were dicking around with it, we realized that the, this injector in particular and this injector were clogged with some kind of black schmeg and you can still kind of see the remnants of it from where we tapped it out on the on the master cylinder um so from there we're like oh well what the hell is this tapped it out bombed it with some brake clean and a little bit of compressed there and it came out so then it's idling fine after that everything seemed cool we were still down one cylinder because this one this connector has you know the, the pin pulled out of it so we do have to replace that, but I mean, I'll put the clip in here. It sounded real nasty. So now what we're kind of waiting on is tomorrow I'll have to get the, um, I'm gonna get all EV6 pigtails. Like I said in another previous video, where I was tying up loose ends, I think. Um, the, I don't like these injector adapter clips. I now have two broken clips um, and they're brand new. The, to me, that doesn't sound like a good idea. It sounds like a really easy way for me to be driving somewhere and have one break and I have a lean condition or something or a random misfire and I can't fix it. Um, plus it's just another point of failure. I know that it really, it's just a pass through of this factory injector circuit you know it's just a piece of plastic that converts it from one one shape to another um, but it is another point of failure the ev6 pigtails are pretty much just as cheap as the ev1 the ev6 adapters or whichever direction this goes i don't know and i can get them at parts stores so to me it's a no-brainer to just switch them over um, especially since one broke already and we have two broken injector adapters so effectively i need one pigtail and two adapters I almost need half of a set of pigtails, effectively. Um, so I'm just going to change them over tomorrow, and then I'm going to get another data log for the guys at CSP. Basically, they said to um, start the car up, let it run the best it can from cold to hot, data log it, and send it to them, and they'll make some more changes to make sure it's all cool. Um, just in the troubleshooting process, we heated this thing all the way up, so if I start it now, it won't be in, in open loop or closed loop, whichever loop, um, for very long, and the injectors will probably start switching right away. I don't know if they'll get enough data. So tomorrow morning when it's cold again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start it and try it out. But 
uh, that's the update for today. It's officially been over a month and it's been tying the shop up for a month, but conveniently, or not, not really in a good way, but conveniently, um, the shop's been dead because of the coronavirus thing. Everybody's staying home. Not really. Anybody's bringing cars in to get worked on. It's not, not a priority at this point, especially with all these people losing jobs and stuff, which is incredibly unfortunate. But, um, anyway, that's today's video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, well, hopefully it gets the dyno soon. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to get a video from it. Maybe you'll end up in CSP's vlog thing that they do. I have no idea. If it is, I'll be sure to make a, a little video of it. But yeah, thanks for watching.